Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we're going to be comparing two free hypervisors and deciding which one is truly the right one for you. In this video we'll be comparing Microsoft's own Hyper-V hypervisor to VirtualBox, and ultimately we'll be deciding which one is easier to use, which one is more powerful, and which one ultimately is the better option. Before we take a look at the actual hypervisors, let's look at some good to know information. VirtualBox is a type 2 hypervisor, meaning it runs the operating system on the actual host operating system and not directly on the bare metal hardware. VirtualBox is typically more user friendly and it's open source, so you can take a look at the source code and really solve problems there. VirtualBox is typically more geared toward home users as it has more home-like features and it's really not meant for professional users. VirtualBox is compatible with more operating systems through the VirtualBox guest add-ons compared to enhanced features which we'll talk about in Hyper-V. VirtualBox is truly free. There's no need to have a Windows 10 Pro license or better to run it. Now here, on the other hand, we have Microsoft's Hyper-V. Microsoft's Hyper-V is a Type 1 hypervisor, meaning it virtualizes processors and memory, which basically means it runs directly on the bare metal hardware. It only officially supports Windows 8, 8.1, and 10, and more modern Windows Server editions through the Enhanced Session feature, which we'll show later in the video. Hyper-V is really meant to virtualize servers and virtual machines in the background, so it's not really meant to be used for like experimentation with software and that kind of stuff. This is meant more towards professionals, and it's meant more for those who need a virtualized server. Hyper-V is typically used in a server situation where you're virtualizing many virtual machines for things like thin clients. Hyper-V is an official Microsoft product, and it's easily installed through the Windows Features menu. Let's start off with VirtualBox's downloadability. You can download VirtualBox on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Solaris hosts. Just in case you're using an older version of an operating system, VirtualBox hosts a ton of their older versions of VirtualBox, so you can go ahead and download the right one that will work with your operating system. Hyper-V is a different story. To enable it, just go into the Turn Windows features on or off, find Hyper-V, and enable it. I believe this is on Windows 7, 8, and 10. Now we can take a look at the actual user interfaces of each hypervisor. Taking a look at VirtualBox, on the top we have File, Machine, and Help. We have a Tools menu, which is basically our little home screen. And then we have Preferences, which opens up the actual VirtualBox settings, not for a specific VM, but for the actual settings of the manager. So we can look at our input, our language, update the actual manager, and our display settings by default, our network activity, extensions, and our proxy. So that's all that's inside of Preferences. We also have the option to import an appliance. We can export a virtual machine as well, as well as create a new virtual machine and add a virtual machine. So if you have like a virtual hard disk, you can add it to VirtualBox. Now we can take a look at Hyper-V's user interface. At the top, we have File, Action, View, and Help. In the center, we have Virtual Machines, Checkpoints, and Details. Virtual Machines is all your virtual machines. Checkpoints and Details shows different information depending on which VM you choose. On the right-hand side, we have Actions, such as Quick Create, New, Import Virtual Machine, Hyper-V Settings, Virtual Switch Manager, Virtual SAN Manager, Edit Disk, Inspect Disk, and then we have Connect to a different server, which allows us to add a different server for Hyper-V. To create a new virtual machine inside of VirtualBox, all we have to do is click the blue New button in the top, enter a name, and from that name it'll automatically pick our OS type. Then we need to enter a RAM size, so the recommended is 2 gigabytes, but we're going to give it 8,000 megabytes, which is almost 8 gigabytes. Now we can create a new virtual hard disk. We can go ahead and select VirtualBox Disk Image, and then click Dynamically Allocated, then select the size and the location. Things in Hyper-V are a little different. All we have to do is click Quick Create, and then Change Installation Source, and then go ahead and find our Windows 8 ISO. Then we can see more options and change the name and the different network switch. Once we do that, we just click Create New Virtual Machine, and our virtual machine has been created. That's all it is in Hyper-V. To change the settings inside of a VirtualBox virtual machine, all we have to do is go ahead and click on the yellow settings icon where we're brought up to settings. From here we can see our basic settings like our name and OS version, then we have advanced description and disk encryption. Then we have system settings which is where we can change our RAM amount, our boot order, our chipset, our pointing device, and extended features. Then we can change our processor cores all the way up to 16, the execution cap and extended features, as well as acceleration. 
In display, we can then see our video memory, our monitor count, our scale factor, our graphics controller, and then we can enable 3D acceleration, which I went ahead and did. We can take a look at our storage. We can see we have our hard drive and CD drive. We can change our audio settings. We can look at our network adapter settings, serial ports, our USB, our shared folders, and our user interface. So it's really simple to add and customize hardware inside of VirtualBox, and it's, it's simple. I feel like someone without any computer knowledge could do it. During setup, VirtualBox really didn't ask if it wanted an installation media. However, as soon as we turn the virtual machine on, it now asks us for an installation media. So all I had to do was go ahead and select my Windows 8.1 ISO, and we're good to go. So unlike Hyper-V, it asks you as soon as you turn the computer on. To edit our VM settings inside of Hyper-V, all I had to do was click Edit Settings after creating the VM. From here, we can select our RAM amount, so for testing, we'll just have 8,000 megabytes. We'll change our virtual processors down from the default 8 to 2, and then we can go ahead and look at our hard drive, DVD drive, our network adapter, and all that kind of stuff. Once we ensure everything is the way that we want it, we can even add hardware if we want, like a SCSI controller or anything like that. So once everything is good, we can go ahead and disable dynamic memory. Dynamic memory would give Hyper-V the advantage in this situation, so we're going to go ahead and turn that off. And then we're going to go ahead and click apply and OK. Just for fun, let's see how quick these virtual machines actually boot into the installation media. So here we're on VirtualBox, I've just pressed the power button, and now we can see that we've booted into the installation media. Hyper-V is a little bit of a different story though. It basically turns on into the setup as soon as we click the start button. So here we go, we're turning on the machine, and we're basically already in the setup. It took that long, it took less than 5 seconds to boot into the install media. The same ISO, the same hardware, the same everything. Everything's the same. In this test, I wanted to see how quickly each hypervisor could install its actual guest operating system. So here in VirtualBox, we have alarms and clock on the left side, and then VirtualBox installing Windows 8 64-bit in the background. In the end, VirtualBox ended up installing this operating system in 3 minutes and 42 seconds. Not too bad, but let's take a look at Hyper-V. So now we've just selected our disk to install Windows 8.1 to, and as we can see, Hyper-V is already progressing way faster through the install process. And less than a minute in, we're already restarting to configure the operating system, and Hyper-V ended up actually installing and getting into the setup with a time of about 2 minutes and 1 second. Each hypervisor has its own way of installing drivers, and for VirtualBox, we have VirtualBox guest add-ons. All we have to do is go ahead and go to Devices, and then insert the guest add-on CD image. From there, we open up the File Explorer, find our DVD drive, and go ahead and run the appropriate installer for our version. Once we do that, it's going to go through like a typical Windows installer. We're going to go ahead and click Next, Next, and then Install give it the administrative permission, and then it's going to restart our system. Then we're going to have Windows 8.1 full screen with all the guest add-ons for VirtualBox. Hyper-V is a much different story. As long as you're using a supported operating system like Windows Server or a newer version of Windows, it'll automatically enable a feature called Enhanced Session, where it'll allow you to connect to Windows 8.1 by selecting your resolution like this, so 1920 by 1080 and then we can go ahead and go full screen, where we can then see that we're inside of our virtual machine. So there's nothing to really install, there's nothing that needs installed. So just navigating around the operating system while we're in VirtualBox, we can see that there is some lag in some places, like opening File Explorer. It took a little bit of time, but obviously that's just because we are virtualizing the operating system. Opening the Start menu, we did see a little bit of lag, or not lag, but time there. But overall, we have animations, everything is running relatively smoothly, and pretty well for a virtual machine. And overall, I would say this is extremely usable and acceptable for VirtualBox. Earlier in the video, I said that Hyper-V is really meant to run applications and operating systems and servers in the background, and that really reflects here after we enable the Enhanced Session. When we enable Enhanced Session, it's almost like we're using a remote client to remote into our actual virtual machine. In fact, that's pretty much what it is. We're using a remote client to remote into our virtual machine. So there's no animations, there's none of that, it's just snappy and it's fast. And so depending on who you ask, this would be good or bad, because for those people who really want the real Windows experience, they want those animations, but with those who don't really care and they want speed, 
no animations on this is completely fine. So this is really up to personal preference, however just know that this is exactly like remoting from a remote desktop. And so with that being said, we can really see the differences between these two hypervisors. And personally, I would pick Hyper-V. I favor speed and reliability over those animations. I would, in fact, I believe that the no animations actually makes the Windows operating system feel significantly snappier. However, for more compatibility, I would definitely go with VirtualBox. If I was looking to run a Linux distribution or even try to virtualize macOS, I would definitely go with VirtualBox because they have wider support for those kinds of things. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device hardware restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.